Hi, Dr. Jaber with the Cosmetic Surgery and Laser Center of El Paso. Today we are going to be performing liposuction of both the trunk and the thigh area, as well as the breast augmentation. So on this one, we're going to do pretty extensive liposuction, uh, abdomen flanks and all the way up on the back, plus lateral thighs, inner thighs, and posterior thighs. So I'll show you some of that, and then we'll end up uh, with a breast augmentation. Okay, so we're going to start off with liposuction of the abdomen. Patient is prepped. The tumescent solution has already been injected. Power assisted unit, like I've sh shown before. So we'll go in and we'll start with the liposuction. It's a, I think as I explained before, it's a fanning type of motion. Um, so you're never removing too much in any one spot. Also, as I see it, there's deg uh, degrees of how aggressive that I like to tend to get in different areas. So if, if you scale on a, go from a scale of one to 10, or 10 being the most aggressive and one being the le least aggressive, for the abdomen, I would probably put it at about a seven. For the flanks, I'd probably put that at a 9 or a 10, and the back probably about 9 or 10, and then when we get to the thighs, I'd probably put that at a 5 or a 6. So you really have to kind of know the areas and know how aggressive you can be and not be. And the reason I say that is so that you don't end up with contour irregularities after the procedure. Everyone thinks that liposuction is such an easy procedure to perform, and indeed it is easy to perform, but it's hard to perform and have it look good afterwards. So we'll go through this and I'll show you some different areas that we're doing um, uh, different parts of the procedure. I've completed the liposuction on the left, both lower and upper abdomen. And so the end point is really it's a pinch test. So I'm pinching, I'm pinching the fat to see how much is left. Now this side hasn't had any done, so it's gonna be significantly different. But when I go to this side, I'll pinch between the two sides to determine, again, where the, where the end point is. You always have to leave some fat behind. People think that you take all the fat out. If you do that, you're guaranteed to have contour irregularities. The fat, is, the fat layer is what makes it look smooth, so you always want to have some layer left behind. I think you've heard me say this before. Um, the final result of liposuction is really not how much you removed, it's how much you've left behind is what's going to determine how it, how it ultimately looks. So I'll go to the other side and then we'll start with the thighs. So the abdomen is, is complete. We did all the liposuction there. You see when I pinch sides, pretty symmetric. So now we're going to move on to the thighs. We talked about aggressiveness in different areas. So on this, on the thighs, you have to be much less aggressive. And one of the ways you can do that also is physically how much you remove, but the cannulas you use. So I switched to a smaller cannula with less holes in it as well. So again, that will take out, will take out less, less fat to pass. So on here, I, I would say that usually a five or a six is really in the way of aggressiveness is kind of all you can go there in my experience. If you go much more than that, then you're usually headed for problems. So we'll continue with the liposuction of both the inner thighs on the right and the left. And then we'll turn the patient up on her side and begin liposuction on the flanks, back, and the other portions of the thigh. So we're done with the abdomen and the inner thighs, and now we're gonna to go to the flanks, the back, and the lateral, and the posterior thighs. So for this, I like to turn the patient in this lateral position. Some people like to do it prone or face down. I just, to me, I've never been able to really get this area if you're face down because it's, it encompasses both the back and the front. So the only way I can see both sides and get it adequately, in my opinion, is to turn them in this position here. So we'll start here, do the rest of the back, and then I'll show you once we get to the, the thighs. And again, I put, I put the most, the more aggressive uh, cannula back on. And this area here would be a nine or a 10. This is, if you're gonna get aggressive, this is the area that you wanna do it. So we'll start here. And again, the principles are all the same. Kind of working back and forth in a fanning type of motion. And we'll spend some time in this area. This, this area tends to be one of the areas we spend the most time. And I'll show you once 
once we get done with the, the flanks in the back. The liposuction of the flanks in the back have been completed and I'll show you that after we're done here, but I'm going to move on to the thighs. So this is going to be the posterior, the back part of the thighs and the lateral thighs. Again, I put the smaller canyon on and uh, we'll be less aggressive on this side here. So this is joining up with the medial or the inner thighs that I did. In fact, this line here to me indicates where I stopped on the inner thigh and now I'm continuing on the posterior thigh. So I'll work on that area as well as the lateral thigh and I'll show you once we're completely done with this side. We're all done with the liposuction so I just marked out the values that I removed from the areas and you can see it kind of reflects the aggressiveness and also to a degree how much fat is there. So of course this be the most aggressive area of the flank, 600 cc's, mid back 250 cc's, upper back 50 cc's. And then we come here to the thighs. So lateral thigh 250 cc's and posterior thigh 100 cc's. So those are all the areas that we're gonna do. Um, we'll turn her to the uh, right side up and do the areas on the right side as well and we'll be done with the liposuction. We're all done with the liposuction so I uh, hope you can appreciate really the, the contour differences that we've obtained in the different areas that we did the liposuction on. So. A little bit more than the typical. We went pretty much on most areas you can go. We didn't do arms, we didn't do neck, but on on the body of the trunk and the thighs we did pretty much pretty much all the areas. So I'm gonna have you come over here and I'm gonna show you the preoperative picture and the fat we removed. So here is the uh, before picture, so you can, it's, it's in a different pose obviously, but I think you can still appreciate the, uh, the liposuction. And then this last one here, I'm gonna bring it over. There's the actual fat that was removed, and you can see most of it, most of it is, is fat, some of the fluid here on the bottom, uh, but that's, that's typical. So we're all done with the procedure. Dr. Mark Jaber, Cosmetic Surgery Laser Center of El Paso. Thank you for watching. So I signed off a little early. The case was liposuction of the trunk and thighs and breast augmentation. So we finished with the liposuction and now we're going to uh, do the breast augmentation. Um, so here's the uh, preoperative pictures. One thing to notice is that the breast mounds, especially on this right side here, it's just more lateral. And so that's something that you really can't overcome with a breast augmentation. The breast augmentation will make them look bigger but this right side, for example, it's going to always be more lateral or to the side. It's going to overlock better, but those are things that I discuss with the patient um, at the time of consultation. And so we've also discussed what size of implants and through the use of our 3D imaging, we're going to use a 400 cc gel implant. That's the size that she thought would be most appropriate for her. And I thought that would be a good size as well. And so we're going to get started and I'll show you as we go along. I've made the access incision right here at the fold of the breast and I've dissected down to the muscle and here's the muscle right here. That's the pectoralis major muscle. So we get on the lateral border, which is this border or the outer border. And so then the dissection continues underneath. And from here I'll have to put a retractor. It kind of gets hard to see unless we were to have a camera. But so from here, I'm going to really free the muscle from from this point all the way to right there to allow, to, to two things, to allow the implant to, to come down and settle in a good position and also so that when the patient contracts the muscle, that the muscle slides over more of the implant instead of pushing the implant to the side and up. So I'll, uh, I'll do this dissection here and I'll put a sizer in and I'll show you once we have that sizer in place. Okay, so the sizer is uh, in, so we, you can see the difference. It's, the implant is actually a 405, 405 cc implant, and this is the unaugmented size. So I'm gonna go over to this side, we'll do the same. We'll put a sizer in, we'll sit her up one more time just to make sure the symmetry is good between the uh, two sides, and then we'll put the actual implant in. Here's the device that we use to put the implant. So this is the real implant. I already put the sizers in, we sat her up, I was happy with the symmetry. This is so we have a no touch technique really on the uh, implants themselves. So it's a funnel. So the assistant lifts there. I insert that with the funnel and just squeeze. 
and the implant goes in. So I didn't have to touch the implant at all to do that. And now we'll put some sutures and we'll close that. And I'll show you once we're done uh, closing both sides. So we're all done with the procedure. The patient is uh, sat upright so that you can see. Uh, incisions have been closed. Again, there are 405, 405 cc implants on both sides. You can compare it with the preoperative picture um, that we have and you can see the immediate results off the table. We'll put dressings on patients who will be seen in my office tomorrow. I'm Dr. Mark Jaber, Cosmetic Surgery and Laser Center of El Paso. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Dr. 915 on Instagram.